Hello and welcome. This is Mary Carter Downing and we are going to be doing the round table discussion. My fellow co-host with me are Danielle Doring, Sophia Daniel, and Kayla Carter. Today we will be discussing 29.2 and we will take you on a trip through history. This is what started World War one. I'm an Austria-Hungary heir. And I'm Serbia. And I dislike her countries. <laughs> Die! Hi, welcome to story time with me and my skit. I'm going to read you a story. Europe's powder magazine, long smoldering, blew up in the summer of 1914 when the flaming pistol of a Serb patriot killed the heir to the throne of Austria-Hungary. That's me. And Sarah Javo. An outraged Vienna government, backed by Germany, forthwith, presented a stern ultima ultimatum to neighboring Serbia. An explosive chain reaction followed. Tiny. Serbia, backed by its powerful Slav neighbor, Russia hmm. refused to bend the knees sufficiently. The Russia, Russian Tsar began to mobilize his ponderous war machine, menacing Germany on the east, even as his ally France confronted Germany on the west, east-west, coming together well. In alarm, the Germans struck suddenly at France through unoffending Belgium. Their objective was to knock their ancient enemy out of action so that they would have two free hands to repel Russia. Great Britain, its coastline jeopardized by the assault on Belgium, was sucked into the conflagration on the side of France. Almost overnight, most of Europe was locked in a fight to the death. On one side was arrayed the Central Powers, Germany and Austria, Hungary, and later Turkey and Bulgaria. On the other side were the Allies principally France, Britain, and Russia, and later Japan and Italy. Americans thanked God for the ocean's most and self-righteously congratulated themselves on having had ancestors wise enough to abandon the hell pits of Europe. America felt strong, snug, smug, and secure, but not for long. So, Sophia, why did America remain neutral? One of the reasons was Wilson's wife died right before World War I, which did not make him very motivated to get into a huge war with the whole continent. Yeah. Hi, Miss Wilson. I'm Dr. Gray. Can you tell me your symptoms? My kidneys are hurting so bad. <laughs> I think you have Bright's disease, oh. and you'll be gone by the morning. Oh, make sure to tell my husband bye, so that he can marry again. <laughs> Another reason for neutrality is that Wilson was a peace-loving president and did not want to throw the disunited nation into war. America was divided on their support for the Central Powers and the Allies. Some people supported the Central Powers because their motherland and homeland was Germany, so therefore they naturally would support where they came from. But others, and many, were anti-German because they did not support Wilhelm Kaiser II. And they also found papers that showed German plans to sabotage the economy, which also infuriated and made them want more and more and more. But Wilson, again, was a peace lover, and he did not want to throw the two sides into a war. When Europe burst into flames in 1914, the United States was bogged down in a worrisome business recession. But as fate would have it, British and French war orders soon pulled American industry out of the morass of hard times and onto a peak of war-born prosperity. Part of this boom was financed by American bankers, notably Wall Street firm of J.P. Morgan and Company, which eventually advanced to the Allies the enormous sum of $2.3 million during the period of American neutrality. 
However, the central powers were pretty mad about this because their claim of neutrality wasn't really valid because they were giving money to one side, giving a loan to one side, but it was all good. During the war, Great Britain and America traded, and it greatly benefited America because it boosted their economy, and Great Britain reaped its benefits due to it helping them against Germany. Germany saw this as a way of breaking the neutrality proclamation because they were only trading with Great Britain, but America stated that Germany could equally as trade with America <laughs> as much as Great Britain could, but Great Britain would not allow that due to the naval blockade they had set up in the Atlantic, blocking Germany from trading with America, thus benefiting Great Britain. Here's an active demonstration of what happened with the naval blockade. Great Britain, now freely trading with the Orange Frisbee, which is best known as the United States of America. Making lots of money, come buddies, going back, you know? And Germany is like, I want to trade with America, we need stuff for our war. And then Great Britain's like, oh my god, no! And then they're like, that's not fair, America, you're siding with one. And then America's like, we ain't doing nothing wrong. We ain't doing nothing wrong! These are the reasons that America officially got involved in World War One. Germany announced its use of submarine warfare around the British Isles, warning the U.S. that it would try not to attack Americans, but it was probably going to happen anyway. So President Wilson warned that Germany would be held to strict accountability for any attacks to American ships. So, um, German subs and other warships, um, um, they were out to sink very many British ships, and the Lusitania was one of the British ships that just so happened to be carrying 128 Americans, and so Germany sunk the Lusitania, and 128 Americans died. And there are other ships like that, such as the Arabic, that, Americ that held American passengers and, um, yeah, they got killed, and America wasn't very happy about that, which was one of the few reasons that America joined World War I. The Germans also sanked the French, the French ship Sussex without warning, and Wilson was getting really mad about it because Americans were on that ship too. And Wilson said that if Germany kept sinking war ships that weren't warships without warning that he would break diplomatic relations, and that was pretty much a prelude to war. Oh. Here in Mexico, it seems that we've just received something called the Zimmerman telegram. What's this mean? Well, I'm German, and I will get you back. California from the United States like the California girls yeah you'll get that back if you beat the crap out of them the Americans had an inclination to help the Allies because they loaned a lot of money to them yeah. all of those reasons led America to joining World War One in Europe in April of 1917, even though the war started in 1914. America was a bit late, but they finally joined in help with the central, the Allied powers. There's a whole. Oh, and conclude. Ow, conclusion. The U.S. stayed neutral for like a really long time because they just didn't want to get involved, and Wilson was a little bit of a. Peace lover, Poonie, and <laughs> when they finally did get involved, it was because of Germany, because they were little buttholes, and they tried to make a deal with Mexico, and Americans just decided, let's get in this world war. In conclusion, at the roundtable discussion, Sophia had to leave us again. We are turning up on a Tuesday in Danielle's bedroom now.
where I learned how to twerk. We're gonna do a bathroom tour because I know you guys have really just wanted to see the inside of my bathroom. So this is my uh, soap. I got it from Chanel and it just makes my hands feel so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so chancy. 